thank you for, for attending this talk. Um, and, uh, uh, this is our motivation. Here are four failures. Uh, upper left is one in New Hampshire some years ago. Abutment went. Uh, wa on the one on the upper right, uh, water got behind an abutment uh, and bank. Um, <clears throat> I don't believe anybody died in those two. Bottom left, 10 people died, and you probably heard about that one, the New York Thruway. Uh, the one on the bottom right is a, a major disaster averted. Two minutes before that bridge collapsed in Ireland, a thousand passenger commuter train between Dublin and Belfast went over that bridge. So we don't know how many people would have died in that thing. So our, that's our motivation. Now, the problem that I encountered uh, in this is uh, there's a heavily used long bridge downstream of a bend in a river. I mean, that's a bad situation. It's coming down, the, ri the, the river's swirling, uh, high velocity, spring floods, you get 40 foot deep uh, rivers. Uh, the problem is the limestone that's under the concrete seal uh, didn't have pilings, is partly scoured away, and the concrete spo spalled in a few places. But, and, and the one pier has lost 35% of its load-bearing strength and 65% of its moment-bearing strength. Uh, and this is a rural economy. It, this would, they would have to drive an hour or an hour and a half out of their way to, <laughs> to get around from one side of the river to the other. So... Uh, now, these are some bridge reports. Um, outer bank is mainly rock, so that out top water just hits the outer bank, comes swirling right down, you know, uh, high velocity water. Um, and so there are undermined gaps under the seal filled with loose debris, which of course is not carrying any load. <laughs> so uh, that's, a, that's a dangerous situation. Uh, here's a plan view of that. Uh, they didn't mark successfully uh, or successively 2010, 13, 16. Uh, they're just showing open places. I don't believe they inspected the downstream side of this thing, and that's Im that's important too. So this is this is the part that they that they they inspected, uh, and um, so now. The flow behavior, and we did some flow visualization in our flume as well, but this is a published uh, work on what kind of vortices are formed. You're going to get a horseshoe vortex around the whole thing. Uh, you, you may get a vortex downstream. That's why I'm a bit worried about the downstream reports in this case, because you could get that uh, scouring downstream horseshoe vortex. Uh, and, and so, you know, I got this high velocity water hitting the bottom of this river, hitting this seal causing this scour. Now, there are some facts about scouring vortices. The more blunt the nose, uh, the stronger the, the downflow and the stronger the vortex. And the vortex strength that hits this thing uh, that's produced scales, that scales on the velocity hitting it, that means that high velocity water at the bottom due to the swirling river, uh, and the width of the pier. So making the the seal wider is not a good idea as far as scour is concerned. What that does is just increase the strength of that vortex, and so you're going to have a higher velocity, uh, tangential uh, velocities that would be during the, the, the scour. Uh, and I wrote that article in 2001 on juncture flows. By the way, I also was involved in reducing the vortex noise on submarines, uh, the same with the fairings. Uh, beginning 30 years ago, and, and now the current Seawolf and Virginia-class uh, submarines have those kinds of fairings on there. Um, uh, this, this is another thing, you know, s swirling. We've done a lot of computational fluid dynamics work, and so the bottom part of this slide shows the, the secondary flow, uh, where the, the top uh, velocity is hitting the outer bank and then coming down. So we've, we've done a lot of... Uh, uh, computational fluid dynamics work on this uh, as well. <clears throat> uh, 
Uh, that's a little bit about me, and that's enough of that, so we'll just p pass on on that. So the solution, what are we going to do? Well, we want to prevent the squirreling flow from reaching the limestone. We got to, the li you know, if, if, if you just say, well, I'm going to fill it in with, with uh, good hard concrete and fill in those gaps, it's going to scour under those too. I mean, this bridge isn't an old bridge. It's like 20-some years old. Um, so we decided that we would, would, we would do the simplest control to prevent the, the limestone from being uh, scoured, and then we would go up from the simplest to something that really was practical from cost, structure, structurally sound, and prevent the um, scour happening again. So I'm going to show you some, um, we built a model, put it in our flume, uh, and uh, this is of the case with no control whatsoever. Uh, we, we run at six tenths of a meter per second where our free uh, stone in front, by the way, a lot of details about our testing methods are given in that NCHRP 162 report, which if you go to our website, you can get download that directly. Um, so we, we uh, did, did test. And we got, we got very similar scour to what the bridge inspection report showed, uh, pretty deep. Uh, we run for one hour because one hour we found with these particular gravels and, and so forth that we reach a, a, a steady state, an equilibrium. It doesn't scour anymore. We've done a lot of tests uh, on that. Uh, and and uh, so uh, let's see here. Uh, this is showing with the fairings. We added the fairings uh, to it. Uh, we used pitot tubes. We, we had surveyed all of our flume. We know what the flow is looking like all the way across the flume and so forth. And we didn't get any scour. Um, this was top view before the tests and during the tests and then after the tests and we didn't get any scour. Well, in between, in between that case where we showed no protection and what I'm showing you now here that works, we looked at a couple of simple things like simple armoring. What if we just put stainless steel on there uh, without much structure to hold it in place? Um, so anyway, to cut to the, to the final result, this is the final proven design. It turns out to be cheaper to do this than just she uh, sheets of stainless steel that you would do for armoring because we've got modular structures for the corners and the fronts. And by the way, oh, is there a pointer on here? Let's see, which one is that? Is that the one in the middle here? Or is that, well, let's see, sorry. Oh, push up. Okay. Okay. And you say, well, uh, what about this? What's this here? What this does is very similar to this fairing. In fact, this module, this module are identical. So that makes it cheaper to produce and to put on. Uh, and, and what that does is it kills that vortex downstream that would, could be, could be uh, causing scour downstream of this, this seal. So that's... So we've got a number of modules that are identical, and we've, we've priced out with divers. It's easier to do this with divers than with cofferdam, uh, and with, with approved ash tow and ACI methods of attaching this to the concrete seal. Uh, and in and, and a matter, I think it's like four days they can install this. Uh, divers can. And, and what this does here, all of this is a structure, a stainless steel structure that's gonna withstand probably a hundred years of, because uh, this is a fairly new bridge, uh, and, and uh, not scour. So that's, that's the uh, gist of what we did here. Um, so we got a permanent solution here to prevent the swirling flow from going under this limestone. Our part of it's only a, a couple hundred thousand dollars, but the rest of it's gonna be probably about a million by the time they get divers and everything else involved. Um, and, of course, you can't use riprap or any of the other 
more common type of thing to, to uh, uh, solve this problem. It's, of course, they're going to use standard methods to restore the strength of the piers underneath uh, the, the gaps, and uh, then, then they'll install the stainless steel uh, around it. Um, general conclusions is that, uh, uh, by the way, by, there's a paper by a lady named Madeline Flint. It's in uh, an ASC publication, 2017. Remember that name? Google it. You can look it up. It's, it's a very thorough analysis of bridge failures over water, and it's like 80% of the bridge failures over water are due to scour, and she, she and her group uh, at Stanford University uh, came up, uh, it's a very interesting paper. Um, so anyway, the stuff that we do is, is build stainless steel retrofits for existing bridges and, and um, uh, coal roll steel forms for new construction of a special design. I know somebody at Federal Highway Administration did some calculations on another streamlined design, said, oh, it, it produces scouring vortices, but that's not our shape, <laughs> see. So anyway, um, so the present value of these, prof, uh, of these uh, types of retrofits or uh, fairings uh, turn out to be uh, cost effective over the life of a bridge because it prevents uh, possibility of scour in this. So, um, I'm going to ha have some handouts here related to what I'm talking about here, but I can take a few questions. I guess, do I have any time? Oh, yes, you've got 15 minutes. How much? 15. <laughs> I was fast, I guess. I okay. Well, I'll show you a couple more slides then. <laughs> um, we, we've, we've designed and tested and in some cases implemented some of these um, a number of projects undergoing. Uh, I'll just leave this. There, there's actually the reference to Madeline Flint's uh, paper. Um, I can't believe that. I think there's something wrong with your watch. Um, well, okay, got questions? Yes, sir. No, it's upstream. Oh, it's, it's upstream. Okay. I was trying to, to to cut the cost. We put this. See this this uh, this fairing here. We also did tests with that as well. That kills the vortex possibility downstream, and it's much less money to put this here than try to do something downstream. So there's an uncertainty here because I don't believe the bridge inspectors looked at that downstream uh, part. Uh, they were just assuming that they would get uh, this kind of uh, pattern here. Uh, you know, that nothing's, nothing bad's happening downstream. But uh, we know from this picture from from flow visualization, actually, flume tests and, and uh, water tunnel tests, that, that that's a distinct, that scouring vortex downstream. And it can get pretty strong uh, right in here. This part in here could get pretty strong. So, yeah, sure. Other question? Yes, sir. Okay. The flume's four feet wide. Um, and we've done extensive testing. Um, let's see here. Yeah. Got that uh, part here and the other part here. And you'd say, well, how, 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 how do you attach this? You see, the limestone is not perfectly flat. So the thing is, this edge here uh, it comes off at a tangent and goes down. Uh, in all of our work, uh, we use laser um, sheets and take photographs of that to get the scour depths in all of our experiments uh, that we do. 
So that's what we did here. I left out a lot of details here. <laughs> Yes, sir. So, how sensitive, if you go back up a couple of slides, to your traumatic view, that's uh, how sensitive to angle of the engine is that? Not very sensitive at all because, well, the, the thing is that the time where you're going to really get to scour is those deep water, swirling, flooding time of the year. So, it, you'll notice it's still symmetric there. And in fact, this uh, part here, it, if, it, whether the direction comes this way, all of our stuff that we have that's on our website too works plus or minus 45 degrees. So that, that we tested it in, in those kinds of, of conditions. That's one of the things I learned with the submarine case that I worked on uh, years ago. It had to work as the submarine was maneuvering to prevent the vortices uh, that, are, that occurred and the same kind of idea was used here. Um, that was a pretty important project on the submarine because that's a major source of noise on submarines and you want to kill it uh, because I mean, you can't do much about the propulsor, <laughs> but you can, you can fool the enemy by killing uh, other vortices on the submarine. So this is not sensitive, well, within, within plus or minus 20 degrees, I think, probably is okay. Uh, all right, uh, other questions? Somebody else had a question. Yes, ma'am. How big are the modular units, and how are you attaching them to each other? Okay, we use uh, standard AASHTO ACI methods, and uh, the diving company has had experience at doing underwater welding. <coughs> and one of the nice things about it, with it going all the way around, we're not worrying about it coming loose and, and uh, you know, it's stainless steel. And uh, quarter inch stainless steel, so. Um, somebody else had a question. Yes, sir, in the yes. back. Thank you very much, number one. Number two. <laughs> Is there any, or have you published any uh, information data about the validity range of the this stuff? whole thing in terms of the size of the pier, the range for the velocity of the flow, and so Well, on. The, the thing about these kinds of shapes is that it doesn't matter what the velocity is. Okay, you're killing the vortex. Uh, and, and it doesn't matter what the velocity is. Now, some of our other work, we have a tetrahedral vortex generator, and the information that I'll pass out has that involved there, uh, because in a lot of scour cases, you get more scour downstream than upstream, depending on the conditions. And these vortex generators create vortices opposite to the uh, scouring vortices, and so you get much less scour uh, downstream. Surely my time's up now. Okay. <laughs> we have time for one more question, if there are any. Yes, sir. Uh, the situation is that in that particular state, they're like number four to get the money to do it. Can you imagine? Yeah. You lost 35% of the load. You lost two-thirds of the moment carrying. You're still using this bridge. But I have a non-disclosure agreement. I'm not going to say which state it's in. So. <laughs> Good luck on going over bridges. No. <laughs>